Okay, everybody, this is Arthur Norcom here. I am just going to walk through my sketchbook um, that I've been working on since 2018, I believe, at least 2019. Um, and I'm showing you this specifically because I'm starting to sell some of my later pages, and this is the last time all these pages are going to be together. So here we go, walking through. All right. And I know it's going to shake a few times if my setup is not right for this. I'm sorry, guys. So, I hope you get some Dramamine because you might get some motion sickness. Because this fish is swimming, baby. <laughs> just joking. All right, so this is my first page. Um, I had just got these markers as a gift from Deja and Tasha. I believe it was Christmas. And I believe I was at Al Nicole's house down in Morgan Hill. And I started just working on random pictures. And I think I finished some of these. At one of our other friends house um, this one's really cool um, but as you'll see in the next page I wasn't too happy with the eyeballs with all the creatures so I decided I should just do a page of eyes just to play around with them and boy did I start having fun with that and this is my first time ever like really playing with Copic markers and uh, I love them and so I start playing around with some abstract stuff, and this was right when I was um, beginning to switch from figurative work to abstract work um, with the Art of Living Black and stuff like that. So some of these pages you'll see, unless you've been following me for a long time, you'll know that a couple of these have become paintings themselves, like full-blown paintings. Um, and some of them I have not made into paintings. Like this one here holds some really nice little concept pieces in here. But eventually I might have to paint that. Because that's just, it's a really interesting concept. Clearly I love blues and reds and oranges. <laughs> um, a couple of these became smaller paintings. I'm all over the place here though. This page here I keep in this book specifically to remind myself what I need to work on and small pen work is not my strength. I also like the tablet up here. Just another page of abstractions. I have this one. As you'll notice some 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 of the pieces in here are reactions to things that I see online. And I was in this phase where I was just looking at a lot of glass art. Um, blown glass, stained glass. Art, amazing artwork out there. And some of it just are reactions to that. And some of it is just straight from my head early in the morning. I actually made a painting out of this one too. A lot of feeling of water or like microbiology in a lot of these, but I wasn't specifically going for those. It's just where my head was going. This feels like leather. I think there's like 40 pages in here, so I might need to speed this up a little bit. Um, yeah, so like this here. I've seen a bunch of artwork like this that I really enjoy looking at. I don't think I'll ever paint it myself, but I really enjoy looking at artwork like that. This was a fun page. It was like a reaction to like the Golden Gate Bridge, but an abstract version of it. Um, this one you will see at some point because it has some very interesting meanings behind it. Deja loved this picture so much that she begged me to make one for her, so I did. Um, it's nice. Probably could do a whole series of those. One, two, three. Various themes. And as I was speaking earlier about reaction to work I've seen online, these are clearly like not my typical style of artwork. Um, but I just had like 
a reaction to a couple of things that I saw. Just drop those down in there just to get it out of my head so it's not just like swimming in my brain. Sometimes that's what the sketchbook is, just getting things out of my head so I can get to the good stuff. This, however, I love spirals. Um, I have a whole piece, huge painting that I did with spirals and I need to revisit because they just make me happy. another collection of random abstractions these ones I took loads of notes um, I really like these two here they fit well together um, I could see a whole grouping of those but when I tried it actually I didn't like the way it looked too much and I think it's because of the sometimes my the white that I use is too um, clear and crisp in the sketch phase and when I try to paint it it's not nearly as clear and crisp and doesn't hold the, it doesn't feel as well done so, we'll see. And I think I this page was me running out of Copic markers. And I was like, oh shucks, I mean, I'm in a groove right now. Let me just keep going. So I whipped out my old Prismacolor markers, which are absolutely different. Like they feel so different that I can't even try to do the same things with the two markers. So, but I love what I did. That's really interesting. And this one here, two parents just holding a kid with the like universe inside of his soul. It's really nice. And this is where my ideas come from for all of my abstract art. And you'll see some of them have dates on them, some of them don't. Um, I was very inconsistent at this point, so when I was doing these, Every now and again, like this picture here, I try to do some graffiti-ish art and just to remind myself that um, it's a talent that I don't have <laughs> and stay away from it. Um, this one actually became a painting, the basis of one of my paintings. A lot of these pictures here you will see in some of the motifs I use. This, this, and this, they, they travel well throughout all of my artwork. I really enjoy this idea of having a huge, large negative space area with no color and just colors and slowly blend it in. One day I will work on that. This was the basis for one of my really large paintings. Combination of these two. Just some fun, fun things. And my lines, I mean, my rectangles got a lot cleaner. I made a, a template that I use on every page to make sure they all sit in the same spot on the page now. Just to make my life a little bit simpler. These are all turned around the wrong way, but the, I don't know how well my camera can handle. Oh, that looks okay. I don't do too many things this, this orientation. Yeah, this feels like the 80s, the bright purples and neon greens. And this one I actually made into a painting. Um, but it was on a different type of paper, so it doesn't really fit with the rest of my body of work. So I just keep it to the side one day. It'll be somewhere else. Huh, the big search. This is my first attempt at one of my legacy pieces, and I just did the, the marker sketch of it. This took me maybe two sittings, maybe three sittings, just to do the marker part which just showed me how hard it was going to be for me to do it on a longer, larger scale with watercolors. So it, it helped me prepare myself for the time to create that large piece. This feels like a game that we play with tiles.
I wanted to try a different format. And of course I made a template for it because I learned my lesson. Make a template for everything you do. All the hard work, if you do it once, you don't have to do it again. This was Inktober 2019, and I was like, okay, I want to do Inktober, but I want to continue doing my abstracts, sketches. And I decided to try to do abstractions that answered the prop. So this was Ring, Mindless, Bait, Freeze, Build, Husky, Enchanted. And so on and so on. And some of them, I think, do a good job of actually illustrating the prompt. And other ones are just, I have no clue. Like, bait? I, what the heck? I don't know what I was thinking there. But it's the beauty of a sketchbook. You get to play. It's more Inktober. I actually did the whole month. One every single day. And I was very, you know, happy with myself that I was actually able to do that from a consistency standpoint. Because my goal, even back then, was to figure out how to do a little piece of artwork every single day. That's just a little gem. It's supposed to be ripe, which doesn't quite fit the bill, but man, it's so cute. I think that's the right word for it, too. And I left this blank just because Inktober was over. I was thinking of doing some big Inktober splash piece and I never did it. And that's okay. And then I went back to doing my morning sketches. This became a whole series of paintings. The combination of these two. And you'll see sometimes I have notes on my pieces that tell me what I was thinking about. So if I ever try to go into them and make a painting out of them, I know what I was thinking. <laughs> this looks like an animation um, logo. Like a cartoon thing that would pop up on the screen before you watch like Ultron or something. I think I was also running out on Copic markers again during this time, so whipped out my Prisma colors. This one I'm working on a series of right now. It's going to be um, based on my Calantha image and this image. About four or five pieces will be painted similarly to that. Not quite the same though. Playing with different formats. This was the basis of my George Floyd piece. Um, as you can see, it was a lot more illustrative in the sketch stage. And I just boiled it down to a more abstract version of this for the actual piece. And I think the actual piece is more stronger for it, where this is a little too literal for what I was trying to do. So I had to do some pen work because my pen, my markers were coming in the mail. So to try to keep the pages similar, it's because they look nice together. And this is also not an original idea. I've seen gazillions of people do artwork like this. Um, this and this also, like I really like them. I like that style of artwork, but I've seen loads of pictures like this before. This became the basis of one of my paintings. Mm. Every few months I actually flip through this whole thing and see any hidden gems. See if I can pull any of them out if I'm having a brain fart and don't know what to paint. And sometimes I get real 3D where it's almost realistic. 
Like it feels as if I have shadows, highlights, and darks and everything. And then other times it's just pure abstraction. Excuse me. And this is 2021, and it's not in order, but um, I was we were working on what our yearly goals were, and I decided this year, this quarter, I was going to do a drawing every day and make it a habit, so I draw every single day. And the first thing I did of the year was, I think, this picture. No, it was this picture. Like I started here, like there's nothing else on the page. I did this one first and I was like, ugh, I haven't drawn in like three and a half weeks, almost a month at that point. And then I did this and I was like, oh dear Lord, I can't do this. This is terrible. What happened to me? And I did this. I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting, but I have no clue what I was doing with the markers. Then I jumped and did this. And then a couple of days went by and I just, I popped this one down on a page. And it reminded me of Kobe Bryant a little bit. And I was like, man, if I actually would have used a piece of reference, I would have been able to do a better job. And I was like, okay, I better, let's see. Let me do a picture where I actually look at some reference. And that was this one. I was like, okay, I think I might be on to something here, right? You know, so I then I pop over to here. And I'm like, I'm getting upset with myself. I'm like, I'm like why am I being so literal, right? And then this was the first time where I started like adding colors in like random ways. And it was like a reaction to these three trying to be too just perfect. Um, and then I was like, oh, I really like that. And then after that, I go down to <laughs> this, right? Back to abstract. Oh, no. Switched up. And I was like, oh, I got to see where I was at. I think I was doing something good there. So then I hit this one here. And this reminds me of one of my best friend's kids. Um... But the colors and just playing around, I was like, oh, wow, there's something there. And then this and this. And I was like, oh, yeah. And it was at this point when I hit these three pieces that people really started commenting about it. And I was like, I could tell that something was different about them. And then this is what you're kind of used to seeing me for the past, you know, three months as I start actually hitting a real stride. And I find interesting is that all the pictures that I do, they have like a, like, they feel like people I know. Um, and, you know, learn how to look at my reference and keep things, like keep the, my iPad tilted up properly so I don't lose distortion. Like, this is actually an African American, but she looks Asian to me. But it's gorgeous the way that it is. Um, so I'm working on my accuracy, trying to get my what I see in my eyes down to the paper better. And this is like perfect. And you can see the struggles and I'm enjoying the action and energy that I'm throwing into the pictures. And this one I think goes in like a serpentine pattern where I just go around this way. And then at this point I was like, oh man, they're all so upset. So let me get some emotions. Then I did this one, which I think is just, I love this one here. These two here, man, just, like I can feel her happiness. So I feel kind of happy about that picture still. It reminds me of one of my best friends as well. And then I start jumping around again, around the page. This one, this one, this one. I was like, oh, they're all kind of looking at this one here. So I just like made all the rest of them look towards her just from a conceptual page. Some nice little gym, gym work in here. Nice work. And I was like, okay, I did faces. Let's do some bugs. And so I jumped all around this one. And then I realized that this is kind of hard because people start commenting about wanting to buy these pieces. And then like, oh, no, well, it's, if you just want one little pick part of it, <laughs> it's, it's kind of hard since they're all married to each other. So all the pages are kind of sold as a page now. Um... This one here is actually has a new home. And this is the reason why I'm actually doing the video. Somebody loved this page so much that they picked it up for me. And I decided to do some trees. Which they look much better now than they did when I first did them in my head. 
of the whole page, my favorite part is this first tree here and this orange right here. The highlight, the green shadow area with the orange around it. It's just, it's so wonderful. Every time I look at this, this just makes me happy. On this page, I got a commission to do a picture of one of my friends from high school. And I was just working on these two to make it to, first I tried it just straight from my head. Then I was like, oh, that's terrible. Looks nothing like her. Then I did this one just to get the shadow patterns. And ah, it's so much, so much energy in here. Just finding the shadows, which was really nice. And then the one that's missing is the picture that was sent to her that she should have hanging up on her wall by now. And because I knew that, I was able to play around and put other stuff on here. This is my ode to Frank Lloyd Wright, his screen print, screen printings, some clouds, walkway, street scene. Too small for me to get the details that I really wanted to put in, but the essence of the road is there. Flying buttresses. Yeah, say it again. I like flying buttresses. Thinking about my mama, she loves monkeys and clowns. So eventually I'm going to do a monkey and a clown for her. If you see this before you heard me, give it to her. Don't nobody tell her. She doesn't always look at these things. But then I'm just playing around. More faces. Had an idea for asymmetrical neck necklaces. Dreamt about them. I wrote about it. I have a bunch of notes written down somewhere about all the different ideas that popped into my head. I am not a jewelry maker. I, I had to draw one of them just to get it out of my brain. This lamp, my wife, every time I ask her what I should do, she says a lamp. So I did a lamp. Don't ask. <laughs> So, yeah. And then I realized that, you know, I need to, if I'm going to sell these, it's easier if I put them on a smaller page. And so I went back to doing my abstract. This book will be all my abstract artwork again and all of my figurative drawings and things that I think people will be wanting to purchase will be on the smaller thing that I am happy to cut up and cut pieces out of. And this is it. This is the last thing that I've did up to this point in this book. All the other things I've done in my other book. That's it. So, hope you liked it. Take care.